All right, Blender Maniacs. In this one, we're gonna go ahead and see how to create this really awesome procedural chain right here using geometry nodes. As you can see, this is all created with geometry nodes and some curves. You could go ahead and just draw the curve and it will automatically draw the chain, which is really, really sweet. So with that, let's go ahead and create this. I'm gonna go to File, New, and here we're going to delete the default cube Shift A, add a curve, Bezier curve, and let's go to geometry nodes. By the way, make sure to look out for my new course, which is going to go over every single geometry node. So if you're interested in geometry nodes, that will be out shortly. Now here for our curve, we want to go ahead and instance some chains along the curve. For that, we need to convert it to points. Let's hit Shift A, get a curve to points right here, and let's drop this in right there. So now we have the points, we want to turn these points into instances or objects. We're going to get an instance on points right here and drop that in right there. Now we need to make our chain object. So shift A, we're going to add a mesh, torus, go ahead and bring that over to the side and go into edit mode, shift D, X, bring this one over and hit R, X, 90 like that. All right, so now we got our chain links. We're gonna go back to our curve. Now we need to drag in those chains into our instance right here. So let's grab the torus, bring it in here, and connect the geometry to the instance. And boom, there we go. No, I'm just kidding. Obviously we need to change this. Let's first scale this down. We're gonna left click and drag on the scale and go ahead and hold down shift if you need and bring it down to a much smaller size. And there we go. You can see that we now have a chain. However, there's a couple things. You will notice that right here, it's not conforming to the curve. Also, if we hit tab to go into edit mode, delete the segments, hit the T key to bring up the tool. And right here, we could get the draw option. You can see that if we draw this, the links are very far apart if the curve is long and if it's short, it works. Now to fix this first problem, we need to go to our curve to points and instead of having it based on the count, so this is just going to give us a fixed count of 10, we're gonna change this to length. And now it's going to be based on the length of the curve. The length option right here gives us the amount of spacing it should have between the points. So let's go ahead and shift left click and increase this until we have something like that. And now you can see that no matter how long you draw the curve, whether it's long or short, you can see that the length just adjusts to it because it's based on the length and not a fixed amount of points. Now, the other issue that we have is that right here, the links are not conforming to the rotation of the curve, as you can see. So out of the rotation right here, we're going to get an align Euler to vector right here. Now, again, I'm not gonna go in depth in these nodes, but basically an Euler is the same as rotation. So this is basically aligning the rotation to the vector. And for this, we need to go ahead and plug in something into the vector to be able to base that rotation around. We're going to go ahead and get the curve tangent. Now the tangent of the curve is basically the direction that the curve handles or control points are pointing in. For example, if I hit tab to go into edit mode of my curve right here, here, let me go ahead and get my annotation tool quickly and I'm going to change it to arrow. So the curve tangent is basically the line that touches the point of the curve, but it doesn't intersect it. So right here, you can see that every control point has a curve tangent. And you could think of it as the direction of the curve. So all of these are the tangents of the curve. So right here, right there, and right here. Again, it's a line that touches the curve at this point, but if we extend the line, it's not going to intersect the curve. Again, think of it as the direction or the way that the curve handles are pointing. So we're going to go ahead and base this rotation based off of the curve tangent or the direction that the curve handles are pointing. Conveniently, in the curve to points, you can see we have a tangent option. So let's go ahead and drop this into the vector right here. And now you can see that boom right away, it's working and you can see that our curve and the chains are linked properly. How awesome is that? Now let's go ahead and hit Shift A. Let's add a mesh plane. 
go into edit mode, scale it way up, and then right click subdivide, go down here, increase the number of cuts to 10, and go ahead and do it one more time, but increase it to three this time. And now I'm gonna hit the O key, go into proportional editing mode, select a couple of random vertices here, like so, and hit G, Z, scroll my mouse wheel up to bring these up a little bit. And then let's go ahead and select our curve or our chain. Hit seven to go into top view. And if we hit tab, delete these segments. If we go back to our draw option of our curve, we can hit the N key and right here we have an option to draw on the surface. So enable that and now you can see that we could draw on the surface and it conforms to the surface. Pretty sweet. Let me go ahead and delete my annotations. Now one thing is that sometimes it doesn't conform properly to the surface. To fix that, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is change the tolerance right here. If the tolerance is lower, it will have more curved segments or handles and conform better. If it's higher, it will have less and conform less. So we can put this down to two and draw it again. So let's draw it again. And you can see what that does right there. Very, very cool. Now over here, let's also add that curve spiral that I had. So for that, all we have to do is hit Shift A, go to Curve Primitives, and add a curve spiral. Let's put it right here. We're gonna hit Shift A, get a join geometry right here, drop it in the middle there, and plug the curve spiral into the join geometry. And look at that, we now have a curve spiral. Of course, we could change the settings here. For example, we could put the end radius Put this down and put the start radius higher like so very very cool let me go ahead and increase the size of this a little bit more now you can see if i increase the size we need to go ahead and adjust the length right here so just go ahead and increase this something like that now it's also going through the floor a little bit too much so i'm going to hit shift a get a translate instances drop that after the instance on points Turn off local space and just bring this up on the z-axis a little bit so that's not going through the floor. All right, next I wanna set this shaded smooth. So Shift A, get a set shade smooth and drop that after. And the floor, let's right click and shade it smooth. All right, very cool. Now one thing you might notice is that sometimes here, for example, the links aren't going in properly. So we could just add another align Euler to vector. If I hit Shift D, and duplicate it and drop this one after. And right here, I'm not gonna plug anything into the vector. I'm just gonna change this to Y. And right here, I could leave it to auto or change this to X. And you can see that that fixes that. If I alt left click and remove this, you can see we have an issue there and there. But with this, that will go ahead and fix that. Also, sometimes depending on how many curved tangents or handles that you have available, there might be some places where it doesn't have enough curve tangents to get the direction of the curve or that information. So what we could do is right here, we could hit Shift A, add a resample curve, and drop that in right there. And now with this count, we're able to change the amount of curve handles or control points in the curve. And depending on how many we have, obviously we have more or less curve tangents to base the direction on. And so this could help to smooth out the curve as well. So we could leave this to like 17 or so. All right, there we go. Next, I want to be able to animate this curve or make it move along this curve, the chain. So I'm gonna hit Shift A. Let's get a trim curve right here. And let's drop this after the resample curve. And if we change the end right here, you could see it animates it. We could also change the start to animate it the other way. All right, very cool. Now let's add a material, new. We'll name this chain. And let's go ahead in geometry nodes, you need to add a set material to add the material. So here, set material. Let's choose chain. And let's go to the shader editor. Over here, let's go to render viewport shading mode. Change the light to a sun lamp with a value of four. And let me zoom in. Here on this material, we're just going to give it a simple metal material. So here I'm gonna hit Shift A, get a Musgrave texture. Control T, mapping texture coordinate, make sure you have Node Wrangler enabled, connect it to object, and plug the height into the base color. So now we have that right there. However, I wanna go ahead and stretch this texture so that it looks like brushed metal. 
I'm going to put the scale on the X to 0.1 right there. And then I'm going to increase the scale right here to like 20. So I'm going to put 20. Let's put the detail to 15. And I'm going to bring the dimension down so that it looks like it's weathered and kind of rusted. So go ahead and hold down shift. You could bring down the dimension, not to zero, but I'm going to put it down to like 0 .0, 0 0.05 or so like that. Then I'm going to hit shift A. Let's get a color ramp to contrast this a little bit better. Drop it right there. I'm going to bring the white slider down all the way to here. So right around here, very close to the other slider, the black one. And I'm going to bring the dimension right here. I'm going to bring this down a little bit more to something like that. Then I want to put the metallic to one. And for the roughness, I want the parts that are white to be shiny and the parts that are black to not be shiny. So obviously we have this color ramp. We could plug this into the roughness. So the black parts are going to be shiny and the white parts are going to be not shiny. However, I want to invert that. So let's hit Shift A, get an invert node and drop that right there. So now we have the white parts that are going to be shiny and the black parts that are not going to be shiny. All right, very, very cool. So now we got that right there. Let's also quickly go ahead and add some lighting. Let's go to the world right here. We're going to hit Shift A, add a sky texture. Plug this into here and I'm going to put the sun elevation down. Again, the lower it is, the closer it is to a sunrise, the higher, the closer it is to a sunset. So I'm going to put this to two and the sun rotation, I'm going to put it to like 130 or so. I kind of like that look right there. Next, let's create a quick backdrop. Shift A, add a plane, turn off proportional editing, scale it up in edit mode like that. I'm going to grab the back right here, the back edge, EZ, bring that up, add a new material to this, and I'm going to make it a black color. I'm going to put the roughness all the way up and the specularity down to zero. GZ, bring this up a little bit. And then these ones right here, we could give it a new material as well and give it a black color and put the roughness up to one, like so. All right, so there we go. That is how to create a cool chain effect with geometry nodes. Now, of course, with this, you could go ahead and draw however much chains you want, which is really, really awesome. And of course, with it, you could animate the end value here. In fact, we could just go ahead and plug this start or end. Let's plug the end into the group input. So now on the modifier, we could change this value to animate the chain going like that. All right, very, very cool. With that, go ahead, share your work on blendermania3.com. Share whatever you create with this tutorial. Again, the Geometry Nodes course is coming out here very shortly, so make sure to look out for that. We will be going over every single Geometry Node in depth. So with that, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao for now. Au revoir.